Thanks for tuning in. Ham Talk Live will be on the air shortly. Please stand by. This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by Tower Electronics. For connectors, cables, and more, call 920-435-2973 or visit pl-259.com. And by ICOM. Heard it? Worked it? Logged it. Visit www.icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information about ICOM radios. It's Ham Radio. Good evening, everyone. It's time for Ham Talk Live, episode number 268. The Newsline Young Ham of the Year 2021, recorded live on Thursday, August 19th, 2021. I'm your host, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ham Talk Live. Tonight, we're joined by Don Wilbanks, AE5DW. And Faith Hannah Lee, KD3Z, and we'll take your calls live in just a few minutes. Last week here on the show, John Portune, W6NBC, was here to talk about remote antenna tuners. So if you missed that show, you can listen anytime at hamtalklive.com or on your favorite podcast app or YouTube, and you can catch the rebroadcast of Ham Talk Live over on WTWW, that's 58. 85 on your AM dial Saturday afternoons at about 3:30 p.m. Eastern time. So get your questions ready to go. If you're listening to us live on Thursday night, you'll be able to call us a little later on in the show. I'll go ahead and give you the phone number so you can uh, write it down or punch it in and have it ready to go. That number is 859982 7373. Again, the phone number is 859 982 7373. So uh, later on in the show, I'll uh, announce that we're opening up the phone lines, and uh, that's the number to call. Uh, if you want to send us something on Twitter, uh, we're at Ham Talk Live on Twitter. And if you're on Spreaker, you can type in the comments, and that'll pop up on the screen as well. So I'll be back with Faith Hannah and Dawn right after this word from ICOM America right here on Ham Talk Live. ICOM has the base station of your dreams with the IC7851, IC7610, IC9700, and IC7300 SDR transceivers. ICOM's amateur radios are top of the line and are the first choice for contesters across the globe. Robust base stations like these cut through pilots Ups, letting you work the bands and record those contacts. Keep your competitive contesting edge with ICOM. Heard it, worked it, logged it. The IC7851 gives you a new window into the RF world and is HF excellence unparalleled. With faster processors, high input game, high display resolution, and a cleaner signal, it is truly the pinnacle of HF perfection. It has dual receivers, digital IF filters, a memory keyer, digital voice recorder, and an SD card slot. The IC7610 is the SDR every ham wants. This high-performance SDR can pick out the faintest of signals, even in the presence of stronger adjacent signals. The ICOM IC7610 is a direct sampling software-defined radio that will change the world's definition of an SDR transceiver. With RF direct sampling, 110 dB RMDR, independent dual receiver, and dual digicel. Create your own band opening with the IC9700. 
The transceiver brings the direct sampling to the UHF VHF weak signal world. This all mode transceiver is loaded with innovative features that are sure to keep you busy faster processors, higher input gain, higher display resolution, and a cleaner signal. It has a 4.3 inch color touchscreen, real time spectrum scope, and waterfall, smooth satellite operation with 99 satellite channels, dual watch operation, and full duplex in satellite mode. The IC7300 changed the way entry-level HF is designed. This high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with a compact design will far exceed your expectations. It has RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, a large 4.3-inch color touchscreen, real-time spectrum scope, and an SD card slot. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM radios. This portion of the show, sponsored by our mystery sponsor, a product so good they are paying us not to advertise it on this program. You're listening to Ham Talk Live with Neil Rapp. Welcome back to Ham Talk Live. Thanks to ICOM America for... Sponsoring the show, they help bring you Ham Talk Live each and every week. Check them out at icomamerica.com slash amateur. Tonight on the Orlando Amateur Radio Club and Hamcation Hotline, we have Don Wilbanks, AE5DW, and Faith Hannah Lee, KD3Z, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about her accomplishments and some of... Uh, the things that she has done um, in her ham radio career at, at a very young age. So, Don and Faith Anna, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Uh, good evening, Faith. It's nice to uh, nice to have you on here again. <laughs> nice to talk to you too. All right. You know, we we normally do this at the Huntsville Ham Fest, but uh, we're we're not there this year, unfortunately. Huntsville is going on, so if you're going, uh, I'm jealous. But the Huntsville is going on uh, this weekend. I'm seeing a lot of people setting up, uh, Ray Novak setting up ICOM. I saw Tom Medlin setting up uh, his uh, his uh, his bit over there as well. And uh, we actually did this presentation uh, on the 10th on uh, Amateur Radio Roundtable uh, with Tom Medlin, W5KUB. And you can see that video on his website, W5, or rather on his uh on his YouTube channel, W5KUB. But let me introduce you if you're not familiar with who Faith Hannah Lee is. She's the daughter of James, WX4TV, and Michelle, N8ZQZ. Her brother and two sisters are also hams, so it's a, it's a ham family. She credits her folks with being the biggest influences in her entry into amateur radio. Her journey began at the age of 10 in December of 2014. Six weeks later, she had earned her amateur extra. Now, this is a a very, very edited version of what she has done since 2014. The nomination packet was 58 pages long, 70 megabytes. It was too big to email. We had to Dropbox it to all of the judges. And our press release is six pages long. So this is heavily abridged. Uh, needless to say, she's done more in her seven years than a lot of people will do in 70 years of, uh, of ham radio. Just a year and a half after being licensed, Faith Hanna was invited to join the 2016 Dave Calter Memorial Youth DX team. That was Papa Juliet 6 from the Dutch island of Saba. Among the PJ6 achievements was a satellite contact that broke the SO50 distance world record. She wrote an article about the event that was published in the March-April 2017 issue of the AMSAT Journal. In August of uh, 2018, Faith Hanna took part in the week-long Youngsters on the Air program in a little place called Johannesburg, South Africa. There's a trip for you. She participated in kit building and antenna building projects, satellite operations, and a high-altitude balloon launch. And she wrote an article about her experiences in South Africa, and that was published in CQ magazine. In December of 2018, she and her younger sister, Hope, N2DL, and her dad organized a 36-hour mini de-expedition to the Dry Tortugas out in the Gulf of Mexico, just off the southwest coast of Florida. They activated uh, November 4 Tango, the girls logged 1,970 HF contacts and 100 satellite contacts. And Faith Hannah's account of the N4T operation, again published by CQ Magazine, and she and Hope shared the April 2019 cover. She completed high school through homeschooling. Before doing so, she enrolled in Daytona State College, where she earned an Associate of Arts degree at the age of 15. 
Currently, she's enrolled in Stetson University in D-Land, Florida, where she's recognized as a member of the junior class. She maintains, of course, a 4.0 GPA as she works toward earning two different degrees, Bachelor of Science in Molecular and Cellular Biology and a Bachelor of Business Administration. She says she's exploring two career paths, medicine or the law, or maybe both. And uh, just last year, she earned a $25,000 scholarship from the Foundation for Amateur Radio. And in 2021, a $16,000 scholarship in the Voice of Democracy essay contest sponsored by the Veterans of Foreign Wars, finishing first in Florida, second in the national competition. Of course, you can follow uh, Faith Hannah K3, uh, or KD3Z and her family and their activities on the hamradio.world YouTube channel. They have nearly 1,300 subscribers, probably more by now. So uh, once again, Faith Hannah, congratulations on uh, on uh, the uh, 2021 uh, Bill Pasternak WA6ITF Young Ham of the Year Award. Has... Uh, has it has it sunk in any or have have you just been uh, way too busy with work and school to even worry about it you know i'm not even really sure how to answer that because the past week hasn't been all that busy for me compared to normal and yet it's still been different knowing that i now am the young ham of the year for 2021 um i don't even know how to describe the difference it's i guess just a a feeling that you get, but it's not like an overriding feeling, if that makes any sense. It's kind of yeah. like, I don't know, like it's there. Like it's definitely there, but yeah, you know, not overwhelming. Right. But it's, but it's different. Life is different now, but just, I mean, in, in some small little way, because of this life is different and, and you're, uh, you're among, a very select group of, of young amateurs going back some 30 years that this, uh, that this award has been presented. I want you to, to, uh, to retell the story that you told uh, on, uh, on uh, the W5KUB uh, thing that we did about when uh, Mark Abramovich, NT3V, called you to tell you that you had won because you had no idea you had even been nominated, correct? Yeah, I didn't really know I had been nominated. I mean, over the years, there have been... A couple people who have been like, hey, I think you would be a great Young Ham of the Year if anyone ever gets around to nominating you. Um, but this year, apparently, someone did get around to nominating me, obviously. And when I got the call from Mark, I thought that it was like an interview, as in you're interviewing a bunch of different people to help make a final decision, um, like you would for like most awards or most like scholarships or whatever you do um, a, f a set of interviews with different people to help narrow it down. However, at the end of the phone call, um, Mark said that he would, I forget his exact wording, but he basically said that he was allowed to tell me that I was the 2021 young ham of the year. And that was um, not only a shock because I didn't know I had been nominated, but also because, I was taking that phone call as if it was um, an interview, not just as like the interview for um, the, not the article, I forget what it's called, but basically the press release. Right. Um, so yeah, that's basically how it went. So you, you just thought it was just another guy calling to ask you some questions and the uh... And maybe to to put in a, in an article or or put in some whatever it is to a selection process or something, uh, not knowing that you were the actual honoree, correct? Yeah, pretty much. That's that's neat. That's neat. So now, um, Don, you left off one one very um um very important thing on, on that list. Well, I'm of, prone. I'm of all that prone stuff, to doing that. You know. Go right ahead. Yes. What did I leave Faith on? Hannah and her sisters are the only people on this planet that have interviewed Hammy, the ham talk live mascot. And I'll, I'll go. That's true. I'll go one better. <laughs> They're the only people to my knowledge that have interviewed flat Don. Oh yeah. There is flat video, Don. There is video. That's right. There is video of them interviewing my cardboard stand up 90% life size. And of course, <laughs> they made a short joke about it. Of course, thank you very much. Of really course. appreciate that. Um, so yeah, that's on their uh, that's on their hamradio.world 
um, YouTube channel, which was funny as it could be. Um, I, I watched that again just the other day and just just sit here giggling to myself like an idiot, which is is what I do most times when I'm not in the corner chewing my crayons because I have this huge inferiority complex about being around all these young hams of the year. But uh, <laughs> so what would you say, though, of Faith Hannah, of all the things that you've done in your your seven years now of being an amateur radio operator, what stands out so far as um, probably, I don't know, your proudest accomplishment, uh, the neatest contact, uh, your number one moment, uh, you just tell us what uh, what stands out to you as just being the coolest. Well, every time that I'm asked this question, I never know how to answer because, as I've said in the past, most, if not all, of the things that I do are really incredible and they stick with me um, all in their own way. But... I think in a way the ones that are separate in like their own special category, if that makes sense, would be breaking the SO50 distance record and probably the thing in South Africa with youngsters on the air. Yeah, that's that's a cool thing. I don't even I don't even know how one would even go about getting down to South Africa other than I know you have to go south uh, for a very, very long, a very, very long way. But uh, you. um you have had quite a supportive family uh, to be able to do all of this. And I know that uh, that your your folks, particularly your dad, have been just lockstep right there with you. He accompanied you to South Africa. And, uh, of course, I believe he was in Saba as well. I'm not sure. But um, tell us um, what the the whole family dynamic is like and uh, and how much that that has uh has directed you not only in amateur radio, but in everything else that you've done, because you're clearly an extremely uh, brilliant uh, young lady and uh, the world is at your feet and you can pretty much go any direction you want. And you know, that all comes from a very supportive family. So just uh, uh, talk a little bit about that, about how much that means to you. So for me, it kind of is the competition aspect that it helps me with because I am a very competitive person. Um, I really enjoy contesting and basically anything that I can compete in. So what it does is instead of like me or just one other person being the only people here to do um, anything, whether that's ham radio related or if it's something else, um, it really helps to have more people just so that I can. We all have that little structure in how we do things. Um, which first off helps us all figure it out because you have a bunch of people who can troubleshoot issues if there are any, um, a whole bunch of different outlooks on things, which really helps you figure out, um, how you'd like to do things and how it would best be done. Um, but the structure also gives that bit of competition because everybody's trying to get ahead of the others, um, you know, to be the, not the best but like that type of thing within the within the family so it just it makes it more fun yeah i could see that uh kind of like i'm the top dog this week and your sister will be the top dog next week and and uh and and your your dad will be the top dog in something uh, maybe the week after yeah i can see that how that would keep you on your toes always trying to uh, not necessarily one up the other, but 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 match, I guess, each other in in your accomplishments and uh, just keep moving forward. That's uh, that's a, that's a great way to be. And that's a great family to be involved in some a family that is so supportive that your dad is is, you know, going to jump on a plane with you and go to South Africa to play ham radio. I mean, that's that's a commitment. That's that is a commitment. And that shows um, just in in how that you and, and your your siblings uh, have been raised. Um, you're just, it's, it's an amazing family and, uh, we could all learn something from the Lee family. That is for sure. I want to, uh, get into your, your, your schooling now because you're 16 years old and you're in Stetson university and you're studying two, um, pretty heavy. I've already, I've already, uh, shut down the, uh, the press release that I had, but, but two pretty heavy, um, subjects there. Uh, how do you choose between medicine and the law? Um, and I know that that's that's maybe later on, but you're you're studying the, the 
microbiology or whatever it is. I've, I even forgotten now because I'm an idiot. But uh, ha, ha, I mean, how do you choose uh, which to go to, uh, which to even begin with? And if, if you've got to make a choice between the law and medicine or both, um, what? Uh, let's peek into your brain about about how one even makes a decision like that, because I have no frame of reference. Um, so I don't even know how you would even make the decision, as you're saying. I think it's more of, I don't know, just it either gradually coming on that this is what to do, or immediately it's like, you need to do this. Um, I know since I was very little, I would always say, and I'm probably misquoting myself, but when I was like two, I would say I go metal school or something like that. <laughs> because my dad was in medical school at the time, and I wanted to go down to the anatomy lab to look at kidneys in a jar. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of just stuck with me as what I want to do. Um, the main thing for me is I do want to practice medicine. That's the main goal. However, I have been considering law just because there are so many. Law and medicine are so intertwined that um, I feel like the knowledge from the law could really help just when I'm being a physician and going through the day-to-day -day stuff like the paperwork and all that stuff where it helps to have an understanding of what could happen if you do this like that or if you do it a different way, what's the consequences of both, which is better, which is easier for everybody, um, and just all that type of stuff. I have to keep reminding myself that you're 16. When I was your age, I was uh... – I was uh, uh, playing around with CB radio and cars and trying to uh, trying to get a job as a disc jockey um, uh, and was, I mean, able to do that for 40 years. I, th I think that if you're lucky, your career chooses you. And that's kind of the way it was with me in broadcasting. So um, if, if medicine has chosen you and if you're able to do something that you, you love doing, you know, you'll never work a day in your life. Uh, which I think is is uh, is great. If you can find a profession that that uh, uh, you know that you absolutely love, then it certainly isn't work. And uh, those are two noble professions that uh, that uh, that I think you'll you I, mean, I think you'll you'll be excellent in. I really do. What else did I want to ask you? I want to get back into a little bit more about the experience in South Africa, about what exactly um, um, the uh, the Yoda camp down in South Africa, because that that uh, that intrigues me about. Uh, what did you What did you find out about the culture down there and the differences in the culture? And uh, uh, I know that uh, there's a lot of English being spoken down there, but still, there's some culture and language differences. And uh, what was it like down there? Um, this isn't so much culture related, but it was cold. <laughs> I was not expecting it to be that cold. Right. Culture wise, um, it was very different, but also very similar. So, like, people would still do the same type of stuff you know, that most people around the world would do. Um, but it was different in that they all seem, everybody who was from South Africa who was there, they all seemed to more, and this could just be because it's what they know, but they all seem to more congregate with their own kind and the group go together as uh, with other people um, to do their own thing. Not excluding the other groups, but like you'd have not just one person who was from South Africa doing something with the other kids, but it would be at least two. Um, right. Maybe it was just for comfort or maybe it's just something that's normal there. But I did notice that a lot, whereas for the other countries, you didn't really see that. Hmm. That's that's uh, that's an interesting outlook. Uh, I, I tell you what, we are going to take a break, I think, right now to hear from yep. Tower Electronics, uh, Neil, and then we'll be back with Faith Anna. Yep, we will, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Yoda too, since we uh, we just had the uh, yeah. the camp here, and her sister was there, so we'll see if they've uh, compared any notes and uh, that kind of thing, and and talk about YouTube and some other stuff when we come back, right after this word from Tower Electronics, right here on Ham Talk Live. Thanks for choosing Tower Electronics. How may we help you today? We have PL259s, we have in connectors, we have SMA adapters, we have BNC adapters. What can I show you today? Where's the tower? Well, we don't actually have a tower with us, but we have all kinds of things you can use with a tower. We have power poles, antennas, 
Soldering irons and meters? Where's the tower? <laughs> Ma- ma'am, that's the name of our company. We can't haul towers to all the ham fests across the country that we visit, but we have almost every connector and adapter you would need to connect your antenna that's on your tower. I don't think there's a tower back there. I really don't. Tower Electronics. Visit us at a ham fest near you or call 920-435-2973 or see our whole catalog at pl-259.com. Sorry, one thing we don't have is a tower. Join the conversation. Give us a call at 859-982-7373. Again, the number to call is 859-982-7373. Or, if you'd rather type than talk, tweet us at Ham Talk Live. Now, here's Neil Rapp with more Ham Talk Live. You're listening to Ham Talk Live, the number one podcast amongst the podcasts with the words ham, talk, and live in the title. Here's your host, Neil Rapp. Welcome back to Ham Talk Live. Tower Electronics, uh, they're they're on the road here. They're uh, in Huntsville, Alabama right now. They'll be there this weekend for the Ham Fest, August 21st and 22nd. Then it's off to Shelby, North Carolina, September 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Findlay, Ohio, September 12th. Uh, Peoria, Illinois, September 18th and 19th. And then... Uh, Later on, Belvedere, Illinois, Belton, Texas, Crestview, Florida. But you can visit them anytime, anywhere at pl-259.com. Thanks for listening to Ham Talk Live. We're on the air every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, right here at hamtalklive.com. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And before we get back to Faith, Hannah, and Dawn... It is time for the Ham Radio Joke of the Week. Now it's time for the Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week, the part of the show where Rick tells us a ham radio joke. The Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week is brought to you by QRM Labs. Now, here's Rick Garrett in 9 GSU with today's Ham Talk Live Joke of the Week. I designed a new antenna made completely out of old pirate swords. I think it's going to change our hobby. It's cutting-edge technology. This has been the Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week with Rick Garrett in 9 GSU. Tune in again next week for another joke from Rick. Oh, boy. He did it again. Oh, my. Oh, my. (laughs) Wow. Uh, Stunned silence that, from uh, Faith Hannah. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all I'm right, just very quiet. Yeah, <laughs> and that, and, and, and you know, after that, it might be a good thing. I, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. I just know. ignore it; it'll uh, go away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is time for your phone calls, so uh, we're going to open up the phone lines. If you have a question for Faith Anna and or Don, give us a call. Again, that phone number is 859-982-7373. 859-982-7373. You can tweet us at Ham Talk Live. We'll check that out uh, here in a little bit. And uh, we'll talk a little more, bit more with uh, Faith Hannah and uh, Don here. And I want to ask, uh, Faith Hannah a little bit more about South Africa because, uh, you know, we just, uh, had our first, uh, Yoda camp here in the Western hemisphere, uh, a few weeks ago. And I'm, I'm still, uh, <laughs> still trying to finish that one up, uh, with all the, the thank yous and finances and all that kind of thing and, and getting ready for, uh, planning for next year. And, uh, your sister got to go to that one. Uh, so have you two compared notes on, on the South Africa, uh, camp and, and the Americas camp? And, and if so, what, what did you talk about? And, um, I want to hear a little bit more about some of the activities that you did over in South Africa. 
Yeah, we haven't talked a ton about it, but what we have talked about was, like, the activities, and I don't know exactly what happened because, you know, I wasn't there, so I can't uh, speak for what she's told me, but um, the thing with, like, index cards or some sort of paper where you had to build, like, the tallest tower, Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of similar to something we had to do in South Africa. However, ours was... We had four people in a group, and we had to fit as many sheets of paper, um, like, on people without it touching the floor, and at least two people had to be touching each piece of paper. So it was not only a team-building exercise, as was the one with the index cards, but it was also one for problem-solving and engineering, because you got to figure out, okay, how can we do this, because you're not allowed to fold these 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper um, and stuff like that. So you could just you could look around the room and just see people working things out and trying to to do their best in the five minute window or so that we were given. And from talking with Hope, that's essentially what happened at um, at the one that she went to. So uh, from what I understand, um, I think they had larger groups, but you still had to figure out what you could in like a a set time limit and there were rules you had to follow um and you i don't know exactly what the rules were for looking at other people for ideas but from the pictures that i saw that she showed me it looked like you were able to look around and see okay well what seems to be working or what doesn't seem to be Mm -hmm. working from Mm -hmm. um from other groups you can figure things out for yourself Again, I could be wrong. Um, no, no, you're you're totally right. But basically, the problem solving things seem to be very similar between the two. Um, they each have their own differences uh, for how they're played out, but the main concept is the same between the both, and you're still learning something and having fun for both of them. Um, we also didn't talk a bunch about. Um, like how the the whole days would go, but it it seemed pretty much the same. Where you would have not you would have not like a lecture, but a talk, like a teaching thing, something like that. I don't know how to describe it exactly. Um, where you would share what each group has been figuring out throughout the day, um, and that's essentially also what we did in South Africa. Um, you would have your own activities throughout the day and every once in a while there would be like a presentation about something might have been about satellites or, uh, digital or something else like that. Um, but you still got to share what you've come to realize through the day and what you're thinking is not quite going to work for, uh, for you to implement into what you've been doing and you can troubleshoot other ways to, Make things work. Um, And she shared a lot of the funny pictures. So, yeah, the (laughs) the funny pictures and the good times seem the same. You know, you catch people at their worst moments, and yet they're like, that's an awesome picture. Send it to me, you know, stuff like that. Of course. And and, and that gets to the other thing I wanted to ask you about with this is – you know, one of our big things was community building and we wanted to create a community of young hams, uh, that was more robust and, and, uh, inclusive and, and, you know, and, and, um, self perpetuating, I guess would be the way to, uh, to say it. And, you know, I know that you have, uh, some contact with, with the people that you attended Yoda camp with. In fact, you even had, um, a visitor over Christmas. So, so why don't you tell us about that story? We did. Um, I don't remember what year it was, but it was a couple years ago. Um, a kid from Tunisia, I forget his last name and I forget his call, but his uh, name was Khalil. And so when we met in South Africa, he was very new to ham radio. I don't even think he was licensed yet. Um, just because he was that new and yet he seemed to have a blast learning about everything and meeting all these other hams who were like him, um, you know, very much into electronics and into 
figuring things out with computers and breadboards and stuff of that nature. Um, at the time, he really didn't speak much English at all, but he didn't let that stop him. He just kind of used the little bits that he could, and everybody just kind of, with everybody, uh, not only him, we all did our best to communicate um, and have fun. So I think it might have been the next year, Christmas, um, he was coming over for uh, college, I believe it was. I think he either was or still is somewhere in North Carolina for that. And he had like a break where he was able to, you know, go do whatever, go back to Tunisia or spend some time somewhere else. And he decided to come down to Florida and he visited for maybe a week over Christmas. And what we did during that time mostly was helping him get his U.S. license because um, because of like the reciprocity things. It may have changed since then, but at that time, you couldn't really get a license in Tunisia. You could only do a U.S. license transferred over. So we were helping him um, find a testing session, which uh, he ended up getting and passed it on the first try. So that was great. So then he had a license that he could use not only here, but uh, pretty much wherever they accept U.S. reciprocity. And once he was done with the whole studying thing and taking the test, we did, um, let's see if I can remember what it's called. Basically the Yoda month, but I forget the yeah, call Yeah, it was sign December Yoda month, yep. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't remember the month. call sign we used, but one of those that was used during that year for the U.S., we got on the air and he got to experience pileups and talking to people um, in a different way than I think he ever had before because um, now that you're licensed, it kind of hits differently. Um, whether you have your call sign or not, it's just different. So uh, we spent a couple days doing that. And he seemed to have a blast, and we kind of traded off, and one person would log, and the other would be on the radio, um, and all the while just having fun with it. Yeah, that, that was uh, that was a great thing, and and I was glad that you were able to uh, participate in uh, in Yoda Month, uh, even the year before we we had that organized uh, over here. You were on the air, and uh, and then. Uh, that uh, I think it was that first year that we kind of had a, a bigger organized effort uh, that uh, that happened. So that was that was pretty cool. And uh, I, I'm also very happy to have uh, N4T in my satellite log from Dry Tortugas. So that that was great. Well, D Don, that that you know, it's 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 all this Yoda stuff. So uh, yeah, you know, it, it's it, it it's catching on. Well, that's a good thing. You know, it's, it's like I, I always say, um, just, I mean, I always say it up on stage when, when we're presenting the, the award in, in Huntsville at the end is, um, you know, the news that you see, um, uh, you know, with, with broadcast news, if it bleeds, it leads. And so the top stories are always going to be about bad stuff happening. And, you know, the number of bad kids, uh, is an extremely small percentage of the number of kids in the world. So the number of good kids vastly, vastly outnumbers um, the amount of, of what you would call, in air quotes, whatever, bad kids. But yet the bad kids get all the news because, well, you know, bad stuff sells, uh, yep. you know, that's just the way it works with the news business. So um, there are so many more good kids in the world, but but all anyone ever sees is the bad news. And let me tell you something. Um, if Faith Hannah is any indication, as well as all of our previous winners going back some 30 years, um, if, if this is an indication of the, the people who are going to be running the world when my generation is gone, um, the world is going to be in fine shape. So uh, I just uh, it's a thrill and an honor to be able to be around these exceptional uh, young amateur radio operators and know that, that, that they're the, they're the leaders. Uh, they are the future. 
and uh, you know, and it's it's their world. We're just living in it right now, and uh, very very proud of that. Also wanted yep. to uh, uh, give thanks while we have time to our, our yes. corporate partners. Please do with the Young Ham of the Year Award, and that would of course be CQ Communications, uh, Yezu USA, Heil Sound, and uh, Radio Waves Antennas. Without them, we we could not uh, we could not do this, and of course. Uh, without our listeners and the uh, the fine support that they give us as well, because um, uh, the Young Ham of the Year is our major expenditure with uh, Amateur Radio Newsline, and we are a 501c3, uh, totally uh, totally listener supported uh, program. Nobody at Amateur Radio Newsline has ever, nor will ever, uh, draw a penny of salary. So everything that we do uh, is listener supported, and they allow us to be able to do this. Um, it was Bill Pasternak's big passion, and uh, we're just happy to be able to be uh, continuing on in his footsteps, bringing, uh, uh, shining a little light on uh, on the cool kids. And uh, Faith Hannah, uh, you are certainly one of the cool kids, and we're proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. And, and you even get some cool stuff. Yep. Yeah, got a couple of radios and some other stuff, didn't you? Yeah, they got a lot of stuff from CQ. That was cool. Some new stuff to play with and figure out. There you go. There you, there you go. go. And yeah. uh, a nice radio for that car that you're going to be commuting back and forth to college with. True. Absolutely. Yeah, now, I, Neil, I, I should... think that's about all that, that we have. Uh, yeah, I, right well, now. I was going to... I was going to... Anything else. I was going to steal a joke from, from another another more famous radio show. That you know, it's a, it's uh, she a two goes joke to show? you know, yeah, it's a two joke show. You know, she she I mean, attends Stetson me, University, you which me. is in which is in Deland, Florida. Do you know where Deland is? It's in Florida. It's a stupid question, Neil. But it's by the sea. <laughs> of course, it is. Everything in Florida is by the sea. <laughs> well, I I I was so so disappointed um i i was down in florida and and got a text from from uh james uh faith anna's dad and said hey why don't you meet us at uh the, this really good burger joint that faith hannah's working at uh, uh, on the way home and i i wanted to go and, and i i looked at julie and i'm like you know how many ham radio things have i interrupted vacations with yeah honeymoons weddings yeah um uh, pulling over in walmart I'm like, parking lots to make satellite yes, contact exactly in the car. yes yeah uh-huh. yeah exactly and i and i'm like okay she is she is bent on going outlet mall shopping I, I i better do it and and sure enough it was like three o'clock before we even left town so I'm yeah. sorry to miss out on that. Hopefully, uh, next trip we can do that because um, uh, I, I really enjoy doing that. But uh, Faith Anna, we're we're proud of you. Uh, you've done a lot. Uh, your YouTube channel, I know. Um, we we even had some comments at Yoda Camp of you know, oh, your that YouTube channel's the reason I got into ham radio, and um, so you've done some some really cool stuff and. Uh, so we congratulate you and uh, wish you well and, and enjoy this year as the, the reigning uh, young ham of the year from Amateur Radio Newsline. So thanks for being on the show, too. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, we are so proud of you. It seems like uh, every year we think that the bar can't get any higher, but of course it, it did. It jumped up several notches with you, and I can't wait to see uh, who we find in 2022. It's just uh it's like it's like Forrest Gump always said. Uh, you know, it's a box of chocolates. You never know. Uh, you never know well, what you're going to find. Uh, and you know, a couple yeah. of nuts like me and Neil as well. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don, thank you for being here and and uh, taking uh, the interview time here with uh, Faith Hanna. And uh, thanks for for doing all this. I know uh, you as. Uh, as I am, uh, are, are disappointed not to be in Huntsville this weekend. Uh, we had, we had planned on that, but, um, hopefully, uh, that won't last long and, uh, we'll, we'll be back at Huntsville. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, uh, 
my personal thoughts on the whole uh, COVID thing. Um, uh, get your shot. Get your shot. Wear your mask. Do the right thing. And uh, the the more of us, I think, that that get immunized, um, uh, I think the the quicker that we'll be over this hump. Uh, of course, you know it's it, it it's your body, and you do what you want to do. But for me and my family, uh, we've got the shot, and I I think that for us that was certainly the right thing to do. So, anyway, God bless us all, and uh, hopefully we'll get through this, and uh, we'll all get together at uh, at a ham fest. Uh, hopefully, uh, maybe Dayton or Huntsville next year. Yeah, hope hope so. All right, well, that is a wrap for this week's edition of Ham Talk Live. Thanks to my guests, Faith Anna Lee, KD3Z, and Don Wilbanks, AE5DW, and everybody out there in cyberspace for listening at tonight and uh, typing in and uh, invite you back next Thursday night at 9 o'clock Eastern Time when Dr. Scott Wright, K0MD, will be here to talk about the 2021 Portable Ops Challenge. And uh, for a list of all of our upcoming guests, just go over to hamtalklive.com. And if you like the show, please leave us a review. That helps other people find us faster. So for now, this is Neil Rapp, WB9VPG in Union, Kentucky, saying 7375, and may the good DX be yours. Came right back to my CQ call The readability five and strength nine You never once mentioned your weather at all 